Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. New World Order is shaping up, at least the borders and the different conflicts, a nation rising against nation and the kingdoms against kingdom is definitely beginning to shape up all over the world, and it is obvious that new lines will be re redrawn, just exactly what the Club of Rome really would like to see, what the Vatican intended for this all to be when they developed together their 10 kingdoms, their 10 regions of the world. In the map that we shared with you recently, we see that Russia ends up taking back part of uh, what was the former Soviet Union. And of course, with them feeling all boxed in at the moment, that's exactly what is more than likely on the agenda. But as we watch as pawns in a game that, uh, in this chess game that's being played, we think that there is really aggression, and the aggression is actually just being played out by the master puppeteer, the Pope of Rome, who is dictating who will get what, when they will get it, and how they will get it. So, very interesting to see. In fact, today uh, on Al Jazeera, they were uh, broadcasting a, a, a uh, part of the comments that were being made by Vladimir Putin in, a, in an address that he was making in Russia. And by the way, also the, uh, the German Chancellor uh, and also the French Prime Minister will be going there, I believe, tomorrow to Moscow to try to broker peace over the Ukraine. Uh, but there doesn't look like there's going to be in, any end in sight on that. And quite obviously, there will not be an end as NATO begins to push back as well. But anyway, uh, the Russian president, he says that the West is accusing Russia of trying to redraw the lines of, of Europe. Uh, and Putin fired back with the United States as, as being uh, hypocrites, or hypocritical in their statement. He says, when it comes to Kosovo, Putin said, we didn't like what the United States was doing, but they did it anyway. And he went on to say that NATO has promised not to expand eastward, but they continue to do just that. In fact, as he put it, the, Russia is beginning to feel boxed in by NATO. That's going to cause this bear to unleash fury before long. But then again... That's the plans of the New World Order, to have 10 kingdoms. And Russia, no doubt, is one of those kingdoms that will be on there. And it takes back over many of the former uh, Russian states that were part of the Soviet, former Soviet Union. So we have to watch to see how that happens there. Anyway, NATO, who uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, said that... Um, he said, France and Germany plan to work out a new agreement on Ukraine conflict settlement, uh, says uh, Holland. Uh, Germany and France to find a political solution on the conflict of Ukraine, Secretary of General Jan uh, St uh, Stoltenberg said on Friday. Uh, this was reported by TASS uh, news agency. The situation is very serious. It is critical, uh, Stoltenberg said on his arrival in Munich for an annual sec uh, security conference. I fully support the new efforts of the Chancel Chancellor Merkel and President uh, Holland to find a political solution. In the new push for peace in Ukraine's southeast German Chancellor Angela Merkel and French President Francois Hollande flew together to Kiev on Thursday with a proposal to resolve the conflict that would be acceptable to all. Later Friday, the leaders will head to Moscow to meet Russian President Vladimir Putin to discuss these, these actual the, the issues that are going on. And furthermore, as we said, as the new world is beginning to shape up, we're also seeing after the burning of the pilot, the pilot that was burned alive, the Jordanian pilot that was part of the coalition forces fighting the terrorism against ISIS in Syria. The, the ISIS group there burned him alive. They published a video on it, uh, and uh, uh, there's been a lot of news. Jordan has retaliated, and they're actually planning on sending troops in as well on the ground to fight ISIS, but they did retaliate with a bombing campaign. Uh, but what I find interesting is that the, the, uh, the death of the pilot has really become, uh, he's become a hero of, 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 for being a martyr. And, and certainly they're fighting a good cause to try to stop ISIS uh, in their tracks to, to do away with this radical Islamic group there that is trying to just uh, terrorize the Middle East. But his death has united the Arabic kingdom. That's going to be another kingdom. And of course, here we are seeing kingdom rise against kingdom. It is Jordan rising against the Syrians. 
uh, of course, the ISIS in Syria, but they were doing their bombing in Syria once again, retaliating against ISIS and their different um, places there. The Jordanian news says that the Armed Forced Arab Army announced Thursday that the Royal Jordanian Air Force fighters carried out Operation Martyr Muath in retaliation for the brutal killing of pilot Muath uh, Kasiba at the hands of the so-called Islamic State ICE terrorist group. Uh, in a statement read on Jordanian TV late evening, uh, uh, JAF, Jordanian Air Force, said that the attack occurred at 11 a.m. involving dozens of RJAF fighters, which were shown in footage as they took off, attacked what appeared to be the military structures, and landed back in the base. The Army said that the targets were destroyed and all planes returned safe to their base. The operation came to uproot this terrorist organization and destroy evil in its lurking places, JAF said, vowing to continue the war until the terrorists are eliminated and Jordanians are spared their tyranny. They will pay for each hair of Muath, uh, the statement said. And as I said, it really uh, brought about a, a, a rally of not only the Jordanian people, which is another news article covered on that, the Jordanians have really rallied together with the president of Jordan or the king, king of Jordan uh, to, to fight the terrorists wherever they may be. But what was very interesting, when we look at the plan of the New World Order, it has also rallied all the Arabic uh, emirates together. Another interesting part about the map of the of the ten kings or ten kingdoms that will be there. Uh, according to a report on Jordanian news, it says the, uh, uh, the let me pull this up right here, it says that, uh, that Amman, the United Arab Emirates, is willing to dedicate military capabilities to Jordan's armed forces and senior Emirati official said Thursday, His Majesty King Abdullah received a phone call from Abu Dhabi, Crown Prince of Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed al Nayyan, uh, who offered condolences over the death of the pilot Moath uh, Kasib, Kasiba and expressed the UAE's solidarity with Jordan, praising the Jordanian army and its heroic role in combating terrorism. Sheikh Mohammed, who is also the Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, condemned the acts of so-called Islamic State terrorist group, which killed the pilot by immolation, drawing condemnation for the, from, uh, by the international community. The king received more calls and cables from leaders offering condolences over the death of the officer. In a telephone conversation, the leaders expressed their country's solidarity and their support for Jordan under these circumstances. Um, and, it, and it goes on and on and on in the article more and more about the different uh, Arab states all around Jordan. Well, could that be the king, the, the king of Jordan uh, Abdullah, will he end up being the, the, the king that reigns over the United Arab uh, Kingdom when it forms together? Just interesting to kind of see how things are playing out here in the news. And uh, as always, we will be keeping up with the information that's going on. And of course, as they try to uh, continue to divide Israel, uh, Israel also looks like it will be part of the Arabic uh, Arabic. Uh, uh, kingdom once they put it together there. The Jewish people certainly will still be there, but it'll only be the grace of God that turns the tide in all of this. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.